we're going to go through um, some some sets of photos about particular projects, and this about aspects, iconic aspects of San Francisco. Anyone who wants to guess what this first section is. Uh, what this, this is this is the photographer's friend. <laughs> Fog is so important. Uh, it, it's, it, it is our identifying natural effect, but it, it's very, you know, it, it covers up works of man that need covering up. And, and then there are a few things that you can actually manipulate and use for your own uh, usefulness. And unfortunately, it, it's, it's not something. Actually, there, somebody now makes a little, a little um, bug bomb of fog that you can, you can use. <laughs> and I it's, have, not, I have, it's not the real thing. I have one, but I haven't ever used it. I, <laughs> it probably doesn't work anymore. This is out uh, uh, at Not Fort far from Fort. here. Yeah. We have a Fort Point beer on the... Uh, Right back there. Um, That's looking into the sunset. <laughs> the, there, From your book? There, there, there's a, there is a little backstory to this. Um, I was doing, a, for some magazine, a story on San Francisco. And I had had a phone call that morning uh, from the magazine, and they said, Fred, we're trying to close this story, but we don't have the fog picture yet that you promised. I said, look, you can't cue the fog just when you need it, <laughs> but I'll get it to you soon. They said, well, if it doesn't get here, we'll have to do the story without it. And that evening, my bride and I were invited upstairs to our landlord, uh, who was upstairs, who was going to pour us a cocktail. And when I was up there, he was just about to pour, and I looked out the window, and I could see this string of fog coming. And we lived in Sausalito at the time, and I said, oh, don't pour. And they, what? <laughs> <laughs> We're ready. And I said, I promise you, I'll, I'll buy you a drink the moment we finish taking this picture. But we have to go right now. And so we rushed out there. Uh, that's just above uh, where Sutra Baths was. Um, and that is my landlord and my bride <laughs> and, and my uncle's car. That, <laughs> and, uh, and while it looks very romantic, if there were, I'm so glad there is no recording of it. <laughs> because they were saying, Fred, for Christ's sake, take the picture. We're freezing our buns, and we're dying of thirst. And, uh, just one more exposure. And, and I, I had to take them immediately to the nearest bar. It was a very expensive production. Uh, those but it made the, you made your deadline. Made the deadline. And actually, we didn't print it again for another 50, 60 years. Um, but, but now it's in the book. Now it's in the book. But yeah. we'll, get, we'll get to the book in a minute. OK. Um, Let's move along. So, so then there's this guy, uh, Mr. Herb Cain. So, so do you remember when, so, so Herb Cain, just to get our, uh, our facts right here, I think he started in the 30s writing for First in Sacramento in here. Does that sound yeah, right? Yeah, he was in Sacramento. Yeah. And he was known as the Sacramento Kid. And he appeared here and was an instant success. And Herb was unique in that he really got San Francisco and did a column that uh, was like no other. And nobody's really been a success in trying to do that again. Well, I was always irritated at people who said, well, Herb, when are you going to write something serious? And to me, this was a great accomplishment. Uh, it, it, I mean, there, it's, it's hard to explain to someone. In a way, it's like 
you know, when there were three networks and everybody watched Walter Cronkite and that kind of thing, but for San Francisco, there was Herb Cain. I don't know that most cities ever even had so much uh, kind of a singular voice that kind of represented um, the city in that way. Is, is, was, is that what you would say from being I would, experienced yeah, contemporary? No, I would say that was true. Yeah. And, and he really loved it. Um, and and he was so let's let's just characterize it for folks who never saw it because but first of all for sixty years uh, basically he was writing for the Chronicle and briefly for the Examiner in the midst of right it. yeah um, and, and it, there were times when I would be going through my cleaning my desk and I would find a, a snap that I'd done of him and I would throw it in the mail to him and once at a party he said. Hey, Fredo, would you do me a great favor? I said, sure, her. what? He said, please don't send me any more pictures of me <laughs> when I had a hair. <laughs> because he went, he, he went through a period when he had electric hair that, that did everything. And then, then he went through a period when he didn't have enough hair. <laughs> and, and, but uh, he, was, he was out on the town all the time. And... When he, went, when he went to the examiner, uh, I asked his replacement at the Cron how it was trying to write a Herb's Cain, Herb Cain's column for the Cron, and he said, it's no hope. There are only so many talking lawyers and talking doctors in this town, and Herb's got them all sewed up. But so, Herb, Herb would, Herb had a, uh, a roll of three by five cards mm -hmm. that were a perforated roll, and they were in his uh, his trusty royal. And whenever the phone would ring, he or his assistant would take w whatever came in, and if it sounded like something promising, they would type it on that, and it would go into a, a little card file. And when it came time to put together a, a column, Herb would go through that and and rephrase it in three dot journalism, as he called it. And 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 so just to and we can't fully characterize it here, but but again, he started in the '30s. He he was writing until the '90s. He was doing six a, a day, six a week rather, uh, six days a week, and then ultimately down to three. But they were these little, uh, in, in a way, it's like a string, it's like a, a Twitter thread of little, uh, little, little chunks of, of things. As you said, the sort of index cards oh. together, and it's things that are happening, tips or, or gossip a little bit here and there. Um, how would you characterize what well, he was uh, actually writing? They were wonderful little squibs that he had adjusted to, to make them really zing. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, if you were if you fed stuff to him regularly, uh, every once in a while he would mention your name, and mm. that was a great thing. Mm. I found that my UPS man would always ask me when he came to the door, "How's your buddy Herb?" <laughs> and I thought, my God, everybody does read this thing. <laughs>